Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to our channel. It's me, Jasmine Little, and my big little brother, Muna. Hi guys. And today we're gonna talk about slim culture shocks in elementary schools in Canada. First of all, disclaimer, education in Canada is largely managed at the provincial or territorial level, meaning that the system in Ontario will differ from the system in British Columbia and so on. Even inside a province, education can vary dramatically between different types of schools and different school districts. With that out of the way, let's jump into our first point. Parent Teacher Day. Parent Teacher Day was filled with a lot of tension for us as students because your parents would be at the school with the teachers and you would be at home wondering what the teacher is talking about. So that could be pretty stressful. It's like, oh, is the teacher still mad at me about what I did like two months ago? I don't know. So it could be pretty, it could be filled with lots of tension. And get this, imagine your dad or mom walks into the classroom and as they approach the teacher, they see a board that says class leader board. We've actually talked about this in one of our previous videos and it's kind of an a list of all the smartest kids in the class. And imagine your name is not on the leaderboard. That would set the mood for the entire conversation night back home. So imagine how different it was when we came to Canada and students are actually encouraged to be a part of that interaction. And in fact, teachers spend more time discussing your good qualities with just a hint of areas of improvement. Next, tests. Back home, tests are a huge deal and it's basically a pencil up, pencil down kind of situation. Yeah, it's really regimented, but here in Canada, not so much. There's a time that is supposed to be the test time, but sometimes if a student is not finished, they can take off the time of other classes to finish the test. And sometimes you can take the test on another day if you don't finish that same day. And if you do really badly on a test, you can even ask the teacher for a retest. In fact, what I've seen is that sometimes when a lot of students do really badly on one test, the teacher will offer for people who want to redo, they'll schedule an entire day to redo it, and students who did really badly get to redo at that time. But back home, it's time up and test is over. Oh, but I didn't finish. Your test is done. It's penciled up and penciled down. Next, report cards. Report cards back home had a percentage kind of format. For each subject, there'd be a percent that represents your grade and then a percent of your total scores in every subject. And when we came to our first Catholic public school in Canada, we expected the same percentage format, but there was a different one, which had EX, AB, AC, and NY, standing for excellent, above average, acceptable, and not yet acceptable. But in our current private school, it's also percentages. We're also going to tie this point into our next one about repeating classes. Now, back home on your report card, it would just say to be promoted or to repeat. But here in Canada, from K1 to K8, uh, the board would ask your parents if you could retake the entire year. But the board doesn't really like when a student repeats a class because it can be it can be damaging to the student's self-esteem. And it would be really embarrassing to see your friends and all of your other classmates move up a grade while you're stuck with younger students. So I do see where they're coming from on that one. And it could be a little bit um, stressful because when you are asked to repeat a grade back home, there's no negotiation. It's just to be promoted or to repeat. Although here in Canada, there are some different systems that students who are struggling can use, such as the Individual Education Plan or the IEP, which is for students who are struggling with their education. Next is rowdiness and class disturbances. Back home, you would not want to be very rowdy or disrupt the class because you can risk um, a call being sent home and your parents being called to the school to discuss future consequences. But here, we actually talked about something called a room clear. Yeah, it reminds me of my first one, where the teacher told the entire class, except this one student who was really disruptive, they told the rest of the class to go outside while they try and calm down the disruptive student. Once he was calmed down, we all went back into the class. In fact, we had room clear drills where we would practice the protocol of what the class should do if there's a really disruptive student. And back home, <laughs> I don't think that was ever a thing. So tell me if you've ever experienced a room clear drill down in the comment section below. Next is morning assemblies. 
Back home, we had a morning assembly, which is where every class would line up in single file lines to assemble in the morning. Basically, depending on the protocol, you would sing the national anthem, pray, even recite all the states and capitals. But that's only in some schools. And you would also be inspected. Teachers would check if your nails were too long and they would ask you to cut them or cut them for you. And they would check if your uniform was correct, if you were wearing all the right things and stuff like that. It reminded me of a military like parade because it was really regimented. There were single fire lines and once your class was called in, you would march into your classes and it was really serious. But here in Canada, they don't actually have morning assemblies, uh, but there are morning announcements on the PA system on the intercom. Where they talk about school announcements, birthdays, and they pray with the entire school. So that was a shock for us. Next is recess. We've talked about this in a previous video, that recess in Canada is a big deal. Every school is actually mandated to have a play area, a playground, and a field for students. But back home, most schools, some schools don't even have a playground due to poor government enforcement and planning. So students would have to have recess in their own individual classrooms. So it was a big shock for us when we saw all of the huge playgrounds here in Canada. It was a really good shock too, we loved it. Next is uniformity and school uniforms. Back home, sometimes over the weekend, I would do my hair in different hairstyles with extensions and different kinds of braids, but then I'd come to school and I'd be pulled away to the principal's office and I'd be told that my hair was not in conformity with all the others. And this is, the, the schools don't like that back in our home country because uh, your hair uh, would take a long time, almost three hours to do, and that would interfere with schoolwork, study time, and homework. Which does make sense. If you're doing your hair for four or five hours at a time, that takes all that time out of homework time, studying time. But here in Canada, students are allowed to express their individuality as long as it doesn't affect the sensibilities of other students. And school uniforms. Back home, every single school, government public schools to private schools, everyone had uniforms. So it was quite shocking when we came here to our first Catholic public school and we could wear clothes like this to school. It was a really big shock because it felt really weird coming in clothes like this to school. But in our current private school, we have uniforms. And I think I like uniforms better because like, you don't have to look for a long time for clothes to wear, but you, uh, you just take a uniform and you're off to school. But it can be a little bit stressful when you can't find your tie. Remember that whenever you like and subscribe to our channel, it encourages us to put out more entertaining and informative content. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash the notification bell! Bye!